We looked at selecting objects earlier. Now let's take a look at some of the things that we can do with selected objects, otherwise known as editing. Here I have a project with various audio and MIDI clips. I'm going to use this to show how to perform basic editing and arranging within the track view. Most objects, such as clips and notes, will respond in a similar way for selection and movement. We'll look at any differences in other views later. Note that just about every editing action, such as moving, splitting, pasting, etc., will follow any snap settings that you have set. Either turn snap off or adjust the resolutions to suit your needs. The clip editing in this video applies to audio and MIDI clips, and a MIDI clip looks similar to an audio clip, but the one obvious difference can be seen by looking at them. Here we have an audio wave that has a distinct waveform, whereas a MIDI clip looks more like dots and dashes, which represents the note data. To edit this MIDI note data, we need to work in a different view. The full piano roll view and staff view we'll look at later, but within the track view, we can use the inline PRV. This is selected via the notes option in the edit filter. The notes view is similar to the standard PRV, but replaces the clips, and we'll look at the editing process using this view in more detail when we look at the PRV. I've already mentioned the edit filter in past videos and covered it in the header area as well, but it's worth reiterating it here. The edit filter is the main tool used to decide which data type we can edit. This will stop us from accidentally moving a clip, for example, if we're editing an envelope. Each track has one, as do the automation and take lines in the track view, the PRV and the step sequencer. Track edit filters are independent from each other, so one track's edit filter can be on clips, another on automation, and another on audio transients, and so on. They are quick groupable, so it's possible to select a whole group of tracks and change all the edit filters at once by holding the control key down and changing one of them. Here I'm going to change two MIDI tracks to the inline piano roll view, and then back again. A state is also remembered in screen sets, so it's possible to set up a screen set with edit filters set to a data type, and then switch to that screen set to edit the data type and switch back again when finished. Here I have a screen set set up for envelope editing. A track's edit filter can be accessed from its header as long as it's included in a track manager preset. The most convenient way to access it though is probably via the HUD. Remember that's called up by pressing the middle mouse button or pressing T. As well as the edit filter and the snap setting that we looked at earlier, which helps us to align data objects to a virtual grid, there are other tools and options that we can set to assist us while editing. The ones we're going to look at here relate mainly to the track view, others we'll discuss as we work with the other views. We'll look at Aim Assist. You may already have noticed this tool, which automatically appears when dragging the clips from the browser view. It's helpful for aligning clips while moving them around. Once turned on, which is done by pressing X or selecting it from the main edit menu, it will show as a vertical line through the track view, which is usually at the position of the cursor. The actual time will display at the top of the aim assist line in the time ruler. There is an exception to the aim assist being at the cursor position, and that is while click dragging clips. Click dragging in the front half of a clip will move the aim assist line to the leading edge of the clip, and conversely, click dragging in the clip on the rear half will move the aim assist to the trailing edge of the clip. This will help with aligning clips. We can choose to show vertical measure lines in the clip pane if we wish, which can help when aligning clips, for example. Mine are already showing. To do this, we go to the View, Display submenu, and select your preferred option from there. None is off. Behind clips is my current setting, and in front of clips, they'll show on top of the clips. Undo and redo are exactly the same as in most Windows programs. Undo will revert the most recent change. You see I've split a clip there, Control z undoes it, and Redo, Control shift z will redo the action. There's also a History option that can be selected from the Edit menu, and using that can undo any amount of changes in one go. Selecting the point at which you wish to return, and then click OK. The number of changes remembered here can be adjusted in the box as well, but increasing a number will increase the amount of memory used. Clips can be as long or as short as we want them to be. Both have their advantages and drawbacks, but the great thing is we can easily split long clips into short ones, or bounce multiple short clips to one long one. If, for example, we want to make changes to one small area of a clip, we can split the clip very easily. To do that, we either hold the Alt key and click in the clip where we want the split to happen, note that the cursor changes to the scissors tool, or press S, and the selected clips will split at the now time. It's also possible to drag split a selection, which is done by holding down the Alt key, and then click dragging to select an area. It's possible to drag across more than one clip, 
splits will be added at the start and end of the selected area. Any of these methods will work across multiple clips as long as the clips are selected. More complex splits are possible by bringing up the split dialog box. This is done by selecting the area you wish to split, then right clicking and selecting split from the context menu while over a clip or while a clip or clip or region of times already selected. Here there are several methods of splitting clips including at selection repeatedly, after periods of specified silence amongst others. The use non-destructive on MIDI clips option will ensure that any MIDI data such as note duration at the split point will be preserved and hidden rather than split. Splitting audio clips is always non-destructive. That means that you can grab the edges of a split clip and drag it out to reveal the original material in the clip it was split from. Here's the clip I split earlier. If I delete the middle section, I can still slip edit either end of these two remaining clips to fill the gap back up. This non-destructive element is true of all slip editing, which we'll look at shortly. Once a clip is split, it can be treated as an individual object. If you do wish to make any editing changes permanent, we need to either bounce to clip, or in the case of clip trimming, apply trimming, both of which can be selected from the track view clips menu or the right click context menu when there is an item selected. That clip can no longer be slip edited out. To combine clips, select the clips, then from the clips menu, select bounce to clips. Note that the clips must be on the same track. This will bounce the clips to one new clip. Any clip automation present is included in the bounce, but track automation isn't. As well as bounce to clip, we can also bounce to track instead. To do that, we select clips that can be on separate tracks or whole tracks if required, and then select bounce to track from the track view tracks menu. This will reveal an options box that allows us to set various parameters. One advantage of bounce to tracks is it leaves the original material in place, which you can then archive and hide. So if you change your mind later, you can return to it. But as combining clips are on separate tracks is essentially mixing, we'll look at that in more detail when we get to that section. The new clip will be placed onto the track you choose here, and you can also choose new track if you wish to use that option. Slip editing, which we looked at briefly a few seconds ago, is a method of silencing and hiding or revealing hidden data at either end of a clip by click dragging the clip boundaries. It can easily be dragged back out again and is non-permanent until either the apply trimming or bounce to clip options are applied. To slip edit, move the cursor to the end of the clip until the edge of the clip turns blue and the slip edit cursor appears. Then click drag in the direction you wish to edit. It's not possible to slip edit a groove clip. To do that, you'll need to turn off looping. And we'll look at how to do that in the groove clip section. Clips can be locked to prevent accidental movement of the clip or the data, or both. To lock or unlock a clip, select it. And then in the clip inspector, remember that shift I, select the option from the drop down. Alternatively, right click and select it from the context menu. Selecting lock position only, prevents a clip from being moved, and when locked, a clip displays a yellow padlock icon. It's still possible to move the data inside the clip, but the clip itself won't move. Lock data only, prevents the data from moving within the clip, but the clip can still be moved, and the data will move with it. It does not lock the data to a point in the project. A clip with locked data displays a blue padlocked icon. If you want to lock data and clip, select both and then neither will move. The clip will display a white padlock. An object or multiple object can also be moved or copied by click dragging them to a new location. Holding the control key down at release time will duplicate the clip or clips. If you drag it down into an empty area of the tracks pane, a track will be created. Movement can also be constrained by holding the shift key down. Even if you've started to move the clip, as long as you press the shift key before release time, the object will align either vertically or horizontally with the original. The alignment will depend in which direction the cursor has made the greater movement, horizontally or vertically. This is especially helpful in the PRV for maintaining the start time of notes, for example, or perhaps on automation notes or moving them.
It's possible to move clip data without moving the clip itself by holding down the Alt and Shift keys while click dragging in the clip. Notice the cursor changes to indicate this. The same key combination, while clicking on one edge of the clip, will move the data and the clip edge at the same time. As well as drag move, we can specify a clip start time in the clip properties via the inspector. Doing so will move the clip to that position. Remember that will also work on multiple clips. It's also possible to nudge clips by preset amounts. These preset amounts can be set in Preferences, Customization Nudge, which is accessed by pressing P. You may need to show the Advanced option if it's not already there. There are three nudge presets, each one which can be set to your preference from either a musical interval, such as a quarter beat measure, an absolute time, such as milliseconds, frames, samples or ticks, or follow the snap settings. Once you've set them, click on OK. And to perform the nudge, select the data you wish to nudge, and then either select Process Nudge from the main menu, choosing the preset you wish to use, or use the default keyboard shortcuts, which are set up on the number pad. Data can be moved in all directions. Numeric pad one and three will nudge left and right respectively to nudge one settings. Four and six left and right to nudge two settings. 7 and 9 left and right to nudge 3 settings, 2 nudges down a track, 8 nudges up a track, and 5 calls up the preferences again.